the best way to approach Roblox game development in 2025. See, we live in a time when Roblox is changing a lot. And Roblox game development has shifted from what it was years ago. Even just four years ago, things were completely different than they are now. And nowadays, Roblox has become a place where you can build a business. Roblox is no longer just a creative sandbox where you just build whatever you want and blow things up and have Legos everywhere. Roblox is truly a place where entrepreneurs can thrive. Now, today we're gonna discuss the business side of Roblox and how to build a business on this platform. Because look, you can be somebody who works for other people all you want. You can do that. You can do commission work. I have nothing against that. But problem is when you're just stuck with using your time and effort, you're stuck in a low leverage system. And I'm gonna be talking about leverage in this, how you can build a, a high leverage system that gives you a business that runs without you doing 50 hours, 100 hours of work a week, like many of these devs do. So first and foremost, the driver for business is income, right? You need to focus on making money. So usually devs will have to start in low leverage methods to make money and ascend to higher leverage ones as they progress in their careers, right? So many devs start with commissions, which is a lower leverage way to earn because commissions directly take your time and effort, unless you have some sort of agency for it. Commissions require you to be spending all your time working on builds, making a map for somebody, scripting somebody's game, scripting systems, right? These things usually take your time and effort. Now, games are a higher level of leverage, especially simple games, but still, if you're a solo dev, that is lower leverage than having a team. But since you need income to fund a higher leverage system, in most cases, you need to do some of these low leverage methods until you have enough capital to fund that system. This is why Roblox development career strategy is essential. You need to find ways to earn so you can build up to making complex games or to building a studio one day if that's what you want to do. Now let's say that you've earned the money. You've earned a million Robux. What can you start doing with that money? Well, now that you have a million Robux, you're able to start funding the hiring of other devs. And usually this starts with hiring one dev. So devs will hire somebody. And typically the first person you ever hire is a GFX artist to make an icon for one of your simple games. So you hire somebody to make an icon. Cool, awesome, you've hired your first employee. You're starting to learn the hiring process. So it's very important that you do this because not only do you use those funds to get something done from somebody, you also learn that skill it is a skill to hire people, to manage them, to tell them what to do. And as you hire people more, you're gonna find that you get better and better at communicating what you want with these commissioners. And that makes you get a better result and it makes them more efficient in their process. So start doing that as soon as you possibly can. In fact, you can do this very early on because especially for a small thing like a GFX, even if it's just your Twitter profile picture, you start learning that skill of hiring and delegating work to other people. Now, another thing, right? It might look like making a bigger component of one of your games. Say you're making a game for the steel, uh, trend. Well, you can hire a builder to make, say, the buildings for that game. Steel games tend to have a base. Maybe you want a really nice base, okay? Hire a builder slash modeler to model a very nice base for your steel game. So you don't have to do it yourself. You save some time. That gives you leverage. And therefore, you can focus more on the scripting. Like, say you're a scripter. You make all the systems. You hire somebody to build the map and the bases. Cool. That's an even higher level of commissioning somebody, of using that leverage of other people's labor. Now you're gonna build up to the point where you can hire and manage a full team, right? You become the project manager. You step fully into that role. You can do this over time, right? Start small, right? You can start small with hiring somebody for a GFX profile picture, then hiring somebody as a builder to do some small things for your game. Then you can hire everybody, right? If you have enough money, if you have a million Robux, right? It costs like 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 Robux often to hire somebody to make a map. But now making a full game, you can do that with a million Robux if you are savvy with how you use your money. So at that point, you can start hiring a scripter. You can hire a builder. You can hire a modeler to handle all these different aspects of your game. And you can have them do everything. Now, thing is those skills of project management, of communication, of leadership that you learned hiring all these smaller level, lower level commissioners, 
will carry over into how you do this and it will be very essential, right? Because oftentimes, and this is a common complaint in the Roblox community, devs are slow. You'll hire somebody to script a system and it takes them three weeks to complete it, even if it's simple, like a rebirth system. It shouldn't take three weeks, but it often does. So you need that skill of leadership, of keeping people accountable, of project management as a whole. And you also need to know when to kick somebody off your team. You need to be swift with these things. If somebody's slow, kick them out. And that often requires a certain payment structure like weekly payments so you can actually handle kicking them out and then also set that policy up from the start say you make an agreement make, this is why making agreements is essential make an agreement doc in google docs that shows the terms of your working together of them being an independent contractor for you now you can figure out legal stuff that i'll let you deal with that you can research that stuff um, but generally you want an agreement at minimum. And if you have that agreement and you say, hey, if I decide that you aren't working up to my standards, I can kick you off the team at a moment's notice, right? Write that in there. That will give you that fallback when you're hiring these devs and they end up not being hardworking. They end up being slow. You can kick them out. You can hold them accountable, right? And of course you can give them a warning first. You don't have to be ruthless, but you can give them a warning. Okay, if they continue to fail to complete things on time, on deadline, kick them off, find a new scripter. Cycle through people very fast. This is gonna be essential. And then you can build a relationship with the devs who are actually good, who actually do good work for you and reward those people. Tell them, hey, you're doing great work, right? And then punish, literally you have to punish your devs. I know that might sound harsh, but it's really what you're doing when you say, hey, you're not being fast enough or you kick them off your team. If you can't do that, if you can't punish your devs, you will never hold them accountable. You will never keep your team in check. Now at this point, you're using your million Robux, your funds to build this system and to have this team of devs who make games for you. This is possible with all, if you put all these pieces together, the funding, the correct system of project management and the accountability and proper hiring process that we're talking about, you can build that system where you're hiring devs, where you're managing projects, and where you are actually able to ship them without you needing to do any of the work in studio at all. That is a very high leverage system. Now getting to this point where you have a business, where you have a studio, will take time. It tends to take time to be able to build this up, to be able to get to that point. Now if you are in that lucky position, as many would put it, where you already have a ton of money, like say you're rich in real life, you can use that money to start doing this now. But the problem is, right, you don't have that skill set. So even if you are somebody who is wealthy, I would recommend that you start small, build up that skill of project management, of leadership, of managing people, like hiring a GFX artist would help you even, something as simple as that, hiring a builder to make a map, hiring a scripter for one system. That'll teach you those project management skills that you can use to then build up into making that full system, that full team of workers who gets things done and who ships projects across the board in every development skill. But this is the point of strategy first thinking is to put you in a position where you can have a system, a system that works for you. And that's truly the only way to amplify your efforts to build a business. The only way is to have a system in place. And you only get to that point through Roblox development career strategy, through an adequate approach that allows you to reach that goal. And it has a lot of components to it. That's why we have to plan. That's why we talk about planning on this channel so often. It's not just wake up one day, have a million Robux, just jump into your account out of nowhere from please donate, and then just start hiring devs and everything magically works out. No, it's a process. It's a process of building up your own skills even if that's just project management and game design. It's a process of earning the funds needed to build that team, to pay them. That is it. That is how you build that system on Roblox. Join Scripting Secrets if you want to learn more about this process and about making games from a strategy first approach. And you can click this video here now to learn why most devs lose motivation so you can prevent burnout. This is a very essential video. I recommend that you watch it right now. See you there.